Welcome to the Vocal Lab Podcast with your hosts, Shelby Rollins and Jason Catrone, bringing you the best from the music industry. Get ready for first class conversations packed with exclusive techniques and transformative insights, all designed to help you reach your top note. Hey guys, welcome to today's podcast. Well, Jason, we're in a oh, new space for all oh, the people watching. You're right, we are. I didn't even I forgot about that. We're in Jason's new house. Yes. I'm in a new house. Yeah. This is gonna evolve even more. Maybe yeah. this is gonna become a thing for everyone who watches. Like they're just gonna be like, ooh, what's the background today? <laughs> Maybe that's it's why like, people will tune in. Yeah, like, right. They don't care less what we're saying. It's just like, what's the background? Yeah. Um you know, it's always cool when like your favorite talk shows get a new like new set. Let's pretend it's that. That's what we're doing here. Your favorite talk show just yeah. got a new set. We got a new set. At least for a little bit, that's going to be the set. And then I we'll liked have a new your set. moody blue wall before, so it, we got to bring the moody. I think we should bring blue the moody back. blue back. Moody blue isn't that a song? Moody blues or is that a band? We could write it. I don't know. There is something called. It is moody a good blues. song title, so somebody out there should run with that. But yeah, we're I, in a new space, and but I mean, like it's new, new. Like you literally moved in how many days ago? Like uh, four? three. Three. Yeah, four. Sunday. I moved. Y'all don't want to see what's outside of this frame. Thursday. Uh-uh. It is disaster zone. <laughs> it's it's not like bad, there's just but... stuff everywhere. Um, but it'll it'll slowly come together. You yeah. know, it's good to be in a new space. And I've never lived in a new house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when we moved into our house two years ago, that was the first that's, time I'd yeah, ever lived in a new house. Brand new. Actually, that's not true. When I was born, I was like six well, months old. My well, that's parents what I was moved saying. Moved when I was born, house. we moved in. I think I was one. We moved into a new yeah, house. Yeah. But I don't remember that. Yeah. So one of the most interesting things yeah. was when I woke up the first morning sleeping here, mm -hmm. the smell of oh, yeah. new. Yeah. Do you so, still smell it when you come home uh, from sure being do. gone? Yeah. It's so nice. I still smell it at my house if we've been out of town for like a week and we come home. I'm like, oh, it still smells new a little yeah. bit. I don't smell it on the day to day. I don't. I don't want to lose that new smell. Yeah. Same with a car. You don't lose yeah. the new home or the new car smell. Yep. So new home smell. It'll stick around for a while, I guess. I don't yeah. really cook like a lot of things that are going to make it Stinky? not. Yeah. Stinky. You know. <laughs> so it should uh, keep its. It's. It's. Um, scent for a while. <sighs> Take it in. Yeah. You know what? Um, yeah. Is there anything I should know about having a new house that, like, is there any, like, you know, um, uh, enjoy it? Well, I mean, I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if there was something like, you know, you change your mail. You address? should like, you should check your, you know, third floor faucet on every third Friday just to make sure it works. I don't yes. know if there was something like that. That is exactly what I was, was going to say. Okay. You should check your third floor, you, floor faucet every you, third Friday. I will do that. That's a good ritual to start. That was a lot of Fs. <laughs> third floor faucet third floor every faucet. Friday. Third Friday. Mm -hmm. Third. Yep. Anyway. Yeah, I just well, wasn't sure. <laughs> you know, there's like new things have quirkiness to them as well. Yeah, because, and they have different sounds. Yeah, different sounds. Freaks. And it something new has to find its way. Yeah. So there's going to be little things that happen along the way. You know what else is new? What? It, it, I mean, new is a relative term when I, what, for what I'm about to say, but there's a lot of new trends in music. This is true. That's my segue, because that's oh, what we're talking about today. Nice segue. What? Trends in music. Trends yes, that's what we're. Do you need to, me to remind you? Because we discussed this already. But anyway, I think we've already dis established. <laughs> case in point, we've already established that my mind is mush. There's three M's. Moving takes a lot out of a person. Whew, you guys. Well, just the moving, the whole like closing and mortgage process. Like it's. Yeah. You know, for all of us, all of our creative friends that watch this, if you have bought a house, you understand. If you have not, you will find out when you do. Like. Being a creative or self-employed, let's just say self-employed. That's sure. really what it is, not just the creative. Being a self-employed person and trying to get a, a home loan oh, gosh. is one of the most frustrating, horrible processes on planet Earth. And I do not know why it has to be that way. Yeah, they don't trust you. That's why. They don't, but small businesses make the world go round. That's true. Just like music does. It's true. But for some reason, you got to like, you know... Give up your third and fourth kidneys, and I didn't even know I had those. I found them. Well, that's, I'm glad you found some. Some extra ones lying around. <laughs> so that you can move <laughs> into this great house. Well, yeah. 
Anyway, okay, so new new trends in music. Yes, talk to me. We were talking about this um, earlier, and the thing that we were discussing, kind of this idea, is how over the course of generations, styles of obviously styles of music have changed, right? You could listen to a song from the 1960s and recognize that that was probably a song from, you know, the boomer generation versus something from the 2000s and on, like even in the last 20 years, right? However, even more um, specific to the genre and the style of music as a whole, the recording style and all of that, is the, the type of vocal stylings that have changed over the years. And what mm. you and I grew up with in the 90s and early 2000s, essentially when I was like, you know, an adolescent, teenager, those years of my life, was more um, on like the power vocal, power ballad, you know, Whitney Houston, or even like, what was the band I was just talking about a few minutes ago? Goo Goo Dolls, right? All of those types of singers that sang hard, for better or worse, whether it was correct technique or incorrect, they were power vocalists. And that was the well, that, trend. That's a valid point too that I haven't really drawn that um, through line to, that the pop rock bands of that time, 90s, early 2000s, were singing just as aggressively as the big power divas like yeah. Celine and Whitney. Right. Just a different stylistic. Right. Stylistically a little different, but they were still aggressive yeah. power vocals. That's, yeah. yeah, I hadn't thought that way. Like who are some of your favorite power vocalists from that era? Well, of course, I mean, Celine, Whitney, right. um, Mariah. Mm -hmm. um, what about in like more alternative genres? In the alternative genres, I mean, I love the Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah. I loved, um, I love like Train and- Oh, all I right. love Train. I love- Pat Monahan, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I love- I've seen um, him live, he's good. Nirvana, I mean, I, they were all so good. Yeah. I'm trying to think of one I did Do you I remember didn't. Bush? Bush was incredible. Yeah, Bush was married to uh, Gwen, Gwen Stefani. Stefani. I Another had great such one. a crush on Kevin Rossdale. <laughs> I was like, he is the hottest. He was the guy. Me and my middle school friends, we mm -hmm. basically were very jealous of Gwen Stefani yeah. in that era. And that was funny too, because she's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, one of my very first CDs that I owned was Tragic Kingdom. Mm. No Doubt, which is her band. Some people are like, what is that? Who's No Doubt? Yeah. That was Gwen that was Stefani's Gwen Stefani. band. Anyway, yeah, she was married to Gavin Rossdale for a long time. They have several children together, and now she's married to Blake Shelton. Yeah. Fascinating how, mm -hmm. how time just goes on. But anyway, I loved Bush. <laughs> I loved... Um, <laughs> you can laugh at me for this, but I liked Creed. Oh, gosh. It did. You know, that Scott was... Scott Stapp lives in Nashville. He does. I found that out recently. I was like, oh my gosh. I couldn't take that. My younger that. self got very excited. I just couldn't take that aggressive, like, yeah. throaty, throaty vocal. I know, but that was a trend too, because like even... It still can be. I mean, Gavin Ross still was a part of that, but I would say more specifically, you've got the Scott Stapp, you've got... Um, There's Stained um, was the other band. Creed stained. and Stained. Oh my gosh, They I had that same... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, but the, <laughs> the biggest one was... Um, Oh my gosh, I'm ashamed that I can't think of this band on the top, on the fly. They sang um, Jeremy, Pearl Jam. Oh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Fantastic, Pearl Jam was amazing. Well, he, Eddie Vedder really kind of pioneered that sound, yeah. I think. And mm. then do you remember Third Day, the of Christian rock course, band? Of yeah. They very much so were inspired. You can totally they're tell still by around. Eddie Vedder. Are they really? Oh yeah, they're yeah. still like doing their thing. I remember, I remember them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was like, but all of those vocals were hard. They sang hard, right? So what do you think it was that <clears throat> ushered that in? Because what was before that? This, the 80s and the 70s. That's when yeah. you had, that's when you had Elton and Billy and Michael and uh, Lionel Richie and um, we can go down And the those list. were like more in the, you know, I wouldn't necessarily define most of those singers as like hard, aggressive power singers, but yet they still, technically speaking, use their mix a lot. They use their mix a lot. But it was a thinner application. It yes. was a little bit more, um, a little more jovial, I don't know. That's light. a good way to put it. It was a little lighter. It was a little more like pretty and melodic and it's yeah. like, um, yeah. Uh, again, yeah, jo jovial playfulness. Dance, playful, yes. Yeah. yeah, the vocal was just a little bit more gentle in the ear. And then it is interesting. I do think some of this was, 
it is maybe what comes first, the chicken or the egg. When you think about did, you know, alternative rock usher in like the grunge era mm -hmm. of even fashion, right? Or did the other bring in the other, you know, I, I think life mimics art all the time, but. Well, in the case of like urban hip hop, fashion was definitely the big ushering into the music as well. They, they kind of danced together through that whole process. Right. I mean, I remember. The streetwear, like Do you all of that. remember Jinkos? Yeah. We're so old. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe our audience is also old with us. I don't know. But I remember that was a big like fashion trend. And it was very much what's that grungy. Funny, what's funny is you consider yourself old. I consider myself young. But you have kids and I don't. You're older than me too. I know, but I'm always on the run. You are. I'm a You live young. Yes. It's a mindset. My children keep me young, but you know what they also yeah. they have all those like Gen Z words now or mm. Gen Alpha. I don't even know what they are. Gen some. They're words that, that people have made up and don't make much sense. But now I somehow know what some of them are. <laughs> and my five year old will say them too because he hears oh, the wow. eleven year old and the nine year old say those words and he he'll run around saying skibbity, skibbity sick my toilet. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Oh my gosh, what it's gonna be funny to see what their music evolves Good grief. into. Well, but that kind of brings us into the music of today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is so different. So different. The genre, the style, the, the um, what is the word I'm looking for? The pattern has changed. And so now you hear, there's nothing new, right, under the sun. Everything is just ultimately like a regurgitation or a remix of something that's already been sure. done. Right, we see this with fashion, right? Because I'll go into a store and I'm appalled because the things that I act actually owned and wore in high school is now in fashion and in style again. And it is weird. And I cannot, and now I understand why my mom would never buy flared jeans when I was in high school. Because she's like, honey, I lived through the 70s. I'm not doing that again. I am too old to wear flared jeans. I wore bell bottoms and all of that through the hippie days. And I was like, man, they're so cool. And now I get it. Because there's things that are popular that I was, I'd be like, there's just no way I could wear that again. I am too old to do that again. It's like I'm trying to be in high school. But I digress. Nothing is new. Everything is a recycled remix of something that's already happened. And it's like, okay, so then if that's the case, we just have to push ourselves to the edge of creativity to make things innovative. But right now, the trend for especially female vocals in pop music is this breathy, like, waif of a sound yeah. that is everywhere. And always I'm gonna think of Billie Eilish as sort of my go-to example of this. And she was a little innovative in that she started the trend, I think, to a, de a large degree. And now everybody wants to sing, like, I used to say, but I'm not sure now. What a, I forget the lyrics of that song, but you know what I'm uh, talking about? Yeah, of course. The Barbie song. Yeah. Everybody's doing that. Well, How everyone, do you feel and, about it? Well, you know, on one hand, being a coach and being a vocalist, myself, like we're talking about growing up, we grew up with power singers, so we became right. power singers because that's what you did. Yes. Right? That's who you mimicked after. That's, that's who what you assumed was the great yes. thing to do. And that's the what, standard. And that's what, like, our coaches had us doing, mm -hmm. working with us. So... I find myself somewhere stuck between frustrated and fascinated <laughs> in the fact that I'm frustrated that no one wants to do that anymore. And yeah. sometimes I do get a little pushback, not in a negative way, but I, I don't have clients really coming in by and large wanting to be a big power singer. True. They don't even know they need it. Way less than I used to. Right. In the last 10 years, it's changed quite a bit. And so... I find myself trying to help them understand it's just another tool in their arsenal. Right. Because as trends do cycle back around, they don't know what's coming next. None of us do. And we will get back to big singing at some point. Yeah. We just will. So yeah. if you're not ready for that and you're an artist that's still trying to like navigate your way through the industry. Right you might be at a loss, mm -hmm. especially if you're a younger artist, right? If you're a teenager, right. early 20s, I would say definitely learn everything about your voice, mm -hmm. learn to be a big singer, even though you're still trying to fit into what's hot and current right now with everything right. you're writing and and putting out. Um, so I find a little frustration in that. I find fascination in the fact of like, again, it's just the whole thing of like we're all 
we're human and we are followers and we yeah we will all adapt to fall in line in most cases with what's going on very few billy eilish stood out because she was cutting through right the noise with something different. very different yes now everyone wants to be like her right which is and so human nature it's so human right? nature so i'm fascinated that we still just always do that mm -hmm. right and so yeah i think that takes me to i'm fascinated in the fact of like you have someone like ariana who grew up with her idol obviously being mariah right that She's someone who started with big vocals and now she's back down here with all the wispy, breathy stuff. Mm. Oh, I haven't noticed actually that in her evolution. Is yeah, her newer I mean, stuff more Her newer like stuff that? is, she doesn't do a lot of big vocals anymore. I mean, she still does. I haven't listened to well, her. Well, take new Sabrina stuff. Carpenter. There's another right. one. Right. Yes. She's a big singer too. Yeah. She came up through the Disney ranks and like, yeah. Right. But now she's just like, all her new stuff is very just straightforward. Yeah. Right. Someone pointed out the other day, I hadn't thought about it, I don't know how true this is, but someone was saying that they know she started doing that after she was on tour with Taylor. Mm. I don't know if there's a connection there or not, but the reality is even big artists will morph and fall in line with what the industry's kind of telling them to do. And that's yeah. not necessarily a right or wrong or good or bad thing. I think it's an individual decision. It should be an individual decision. Yeah. Often I think it's probably more of the, the people pulling the strings yeah, that you're might right. be directing totally. artistically what's going on with an artist's career. Yeah, and, then, um, and that's oh, not to say this, that- this, this is selling right now, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that's not to say any of those artists did that. I have no clue what their right. back, back line looks like or who makes decisions or what. I'm just pointing out realities of what I, what yeah. I see and what I hear along the way. And so, yeah, I don't know how much longer we're gonna be in this place because it's all it's also just part of the trend of production. Mm -hmm. And producers have mm -hmm. gotten through the DJ movement, have become more dominant in their creative part of the bigger picture. Yeah, they're often writers on the song. Yeah. The producers. Right, and the producers have always <laughs> been a, a huge part of the song, of course, they sure. produce it. but. The production has become such a part of the sound as much yeah. as the vocal, sometimes even more. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of that did come through the DJ, you know. Totally. Moment, which seems to have, you know. And that is a different focus, right? Because the, the artistic and musical focus of a lot of that in production or a lot of that in um this what you're talking about where the producers are such a more integrative process part of the creative process the songwriting process that's creating a different sound sonically in our music that is, is more leaning heavy on production right versus yeah. live instruments or live vocals so now you see a trend where if somebody can kind of get their foot in the door they've got the right connections their voice is good enough they can really ride the coattails of a bomb producer who's made a really sick track. Of course. And then all of a sudden, now we're obsessed with the artist, right? Mm -hmm. Because you see the artist, it gives you something to connect to, whereas the producer True. is behind the scenes. You don't hard, you don't know who half these people look like or what their names are. You know, some of them. Yeah, like Phineas but, or Max Martin or Dr. Luke, you know people right, with yeah. the big names, but. Um, or chain smokers, yeah. that kind of a thing, right? But I don't even know if I could pick them out of a lineup. I don't know if yeah. they look like, you well, know what I mean? Well, most of them are not about the visual. They're not, right? yeah. They like to be behind the scenes. But then it gives opportunity for, and I don't mean shade, I'm, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. And so I won't say any name specific, but it gives opportunity for less talented singers to have success in music because mm. they're able to get in on a really good track. It's true. And, in, and, and they could be very, very talented in other respects that add all the credibility that they need as an artist. So it's not all about the vocal, right? But that's the trend. So I think you're right. I think that is another element of the, the thing that's feeding this trend is that production side, no doubt. I like your take on it. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I think the trend also, uh, I think if you're trying to, <clears throat> as an artist or producer or songwriter, in, anyone in that creative side of the, the, of the equation, I think you are best served when you study these generational trends of music, right. go all the way back, take it back to like Sinatra time and come forward mm -hmm. and understand the writing, the production and the vocals yeah, and see how it all fits together beautifully, yet there mm -hmm. are distinctive differences generation yeah. by generation. And I think maybe question to you, Shelby, is like, 
What do you think are some of the big factors that determine those, those generational trend shifts? Because they always happen. Part of it's yeah. the business structure, right? Yeah. Business is always trying to like, they're trying to find something new that'll hit, that'll right. take off that. Um, and I, I don't think, you can't predict the trend. Right. By and large, you can't predict the trend. Right. If, if so, you would have every major company just doing it all the time. I think everyone gets a little lucky with what hits, yeah. right? Now we have social media, which also affects this trending. Mm -hmm. um, but even mm -hmm. that's not a surefire bet. And something may trend on TikTok, but still not catch on with the populace in music. Right. You might have a TikTok hot song that still doesn't hit top 100, right? Yeah, right. So there are no guarantees, but I think studying all these trends mm -hmm. um, helps you become a better artist regardless of which part of the equation you play. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously there's a business. Right. I think there is just calling out, it's generational. So every generation does want something that's their own. Yeah. So like your youngest, who's five, Yeah. He his generation's gonna want something of their own. Totally. So they're gonna be looking for it when they're 13, 14, 15, 16. That's so why they have all these these words. And every generation has yeah. done this. It's yeah. definitely on another level right now. Mm. But all of the little lingo words that yeah. are new and f funny and everybody's making jokes and memes and stuff about Sigma and sure. whatever they all are. But what else do you think affects whoop, it? Not in the cup room. Um you know, when you were, t I, I do think that our culture plays a big role in this. Bingo. And even politics. Absolutely. But the, the state of our world, right, I think is, is in many ways forming all of us. Whether we like that or not, I think it's true. We are all being formed. It is what are we for being formed by and unto. Mm -hmm. Not, I, you know, and there's nobody who's an island. There's nobody who's just like, I am so individual. I am my own person. Uh, BS. You are being formed by something. And you, because you can't, nobody lives and exists in a vacuum, right? And so this idea though, like for instance, I'm going to get kind of heavy for a second. Suicide rates among young people are higher than they have ever, ever been. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of turmoil in the world. But more than that, there's more access to information than we have ever seen in our lives yes. or in any other generation, Yeah. right? I used to never know if there was a massive natural disaster on the other side of the planet. I mean, now in the era of our generation, we know this because of like news on TV, but, it, but that even was like sometimes days later, right? If it didn't pertain to me and my small world in Florida growing mm -hmm. up. But our parents' generation, they didn't know that kind of stuff. Their parents' generation would have never in their lifetime known about a tsunami on the other side of the world or something like that, the devastated No, culture. I mean, growing up, we knew about it at 8 a.m., 5 p.m., or 10 p.m. because our parents were watching the news. that's when the news, news was on. Right? Now it's constant. Instant. And that's, that's the interesting Instant point. information. That's an interesting thing that you just pointed out because here, historically, music there have always been a few artists in every generation who have cut through the culture with the trend setting, yeah. like a Madonna, right. right? Or the Beatles, like all these huge artists that were counter to culture that were shock effect. And our parents were like, don't listen to them, right? right? Because they're bad. Right. They were just trying to be counter to what culture was telling us to be and do. Right. And now we're in this interesting space because historically, follow my, follow my thought here, historically, music has been the opposite of what culture was. So if it was a time of war and it was really heavy and sad, the music was happy. Right, like the Beatles, only time that's, imagine those The only of times stuff. that's not been true, I mean, there's always been people, there's always been everything you can find, right? If you want to be sad, you could. Right. But the dominant source would be the opposite of what was happening in culture. Right. It's been different since COVID. What should have happened during COVID when it was the heaviest, everyone's locked in their house. We all should have been playing happy music, like, but who hit Billie Eilish? Mm. It got real moody. It got real sad. It got so really, it That's got really um, emo, right? And yeah. so, and everybody's always written from their present emotions. But you're right. The things that popped off were usually the things that were almost like the anecdote for, the antidote for the the thing that yeah. was sick and wrong to right. make us feel a certain way and help you know, motivated generation, you'll see some of that mm -hmm. from time to time, but now it's very much so, I will indulge my feelings, I will flesh them out, and because 
anybody can put out music at any given point in time, right? I could write, go home and write a song and just throw it up on Instagram and then put it up on Spotify, lickety split like that. It's so real time that we're seeing so much more of the music is so like capturing of our feelings, right? And indulges our feelings even more. So then all of a sudden now you've got these big feelings that we're all like, what is happening in our world? But there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's unfortunately a lot of suicide because people have no idea who they are. They feel like a stranger inside of themselves. There's so much isolation. There's so little mental health assistance with young people. There's so much anxiety. There's so much depression that the music is absolutely reflecting that in an I think in a scary way. Well, it is, like, and that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, what should be happening is everyone running to happy stuff, and it's not. And I think social media is the dominant. Oh yeah. Dominant like fiber running through all of that. That's yeah. causing us to go in the same direction. Yeah. Because it's so constant. <laughs> Historians will tell us if we make it that far into history as a as, as a world. If the apocalypse but, doesn't. Yeah, happen, the apocalypse maybe. doesn't come. Um, I think that will be one of. the it's obviously going to be one of the things they study most is how this yeah, social sure. experiment with social media has affected everything yeah. about us and everything in culture and how we interact mm-hmm. and respond and grow in and through it right? and how those trends were formed. A lot of it's going to fall back to the social media time. So to me, it's very interesting. This is, I mean, obviously it's something we could talk about for hours. I have one I wish hot we take. Had, take it. Because I don't want you to lay on the plane yet. I have one hot take. Yeah. Okay, so the wispy vocal oh, yeah, thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Kind of like, what is the connection between that and the trends and the stuff in culture that we're kind of talking about? Mm. And, you know, the, the things like suicide, which is indicative of people being um, depressed, anxious, and having no sense of self, no, no, like, um, what would you call it? True north in mm-hmm. their internal compass, sure. right? They're like mixed all over the place. Mm. Um, I think when you hear somebody like a Billie Eilish, who I'm not saying anything negative about, is that could be absolutely very authentic and innovative for her. But when you see everybody carbon copy that and try to do it over and over again, it's people are out there looking desperately for some sense of self, some identity, something to hold on to. And when they can see themselves in even the the, um, lyricism of a song, and that vibe, her moodiness matches how they feel, which yeah. is confused, which is anxious and depressed. It makes total sense that they would be like, that's me too. I'll sing like that also. When in reality, you hear them talk. They don't talk like that. Mm-mm. Like they don't talk with these voices like that. <laughs> right? It'd be funny they're, if they They're did. speaking a little bit more neutral. <laughs> it would be kind of funny. Mm. Um, also, it would be really, it would be very mm. strange. but. There's, they're more neutral. I am such a believer that your speaking voice is so indicative of your singing voice. Yes, yes. And that's where your authenticity starts to come from. And so if, yep. if it's a complete hard left from the way that you talk, it is disingenuous. It's not actually authentically you. That's a valid point. So you're just trying to be something that you identify with emotionally without, and, and you're basically circumventing the process of figuring out who you truly are. Mm, and it's one of deep. the reasons I know it's deep. I can't tell you one how of the many clients. I'm passionate about helping people find their authentic voice. Yeah, it actually matters for their whole lives. Of course it does. I can't. I can't even tell you how many clients I literally point out when they're trying to sing something, and I have them just make a more neutral, normal tone. Yeah. And they can't do it. They keep going back to them like, "You don't talk like this." Yes. yes all right. The time. I say it all the time. All the time. And then they laugh about it. Yeah. But they still have a hard time finding it. Their voice, mm-hmm. their mind is so connected to that yeah. uh, when they sing. Yeah. It's interesting. There's so it. much more I could say. Yeah, we could go on. You know, this would be a great topic sometime with a guest too. Um, yes. If you guys have thoughts on this, please comment. Yeah, share like, them. Share it. Uh, go over to YouTube, drop comments. Go to our social media, drop comments. Right. Um, let us know your thoughts on trends, on mm-hmm. what's next, what's been, what you like, what you don't like. Um yeah, we just want to hear from you. This has been fascinating. Absolutely. I'm all fired up now. We will we will definitely talk about this more and more. Indeed. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Vocal Lab podcast. Ready to join the top ranks of the music industry? 
Don't forget to follow and subscribe for more first class conversations that make the extraordinary your new ordinary. Until next time, keep striving for your top note.